Hey guys, how you doing? Today we're having a look at the JF-17 Thunder and its capabilities against the deadly F-15C Eagle. The JF-17 is a lightweight, single-engine, multi-role combat aircraft developed jointly by Pakistan and China. The airframe is constructed primarily of aluminum alloys with high-strength steel and titanium alloys used in some critical areas. The JF-17 was designed with high angle of attack capabilities as one of its primary strengths. The position and shape of the inlets is designed to give the required airflow to the jet engine during maneuvers involving high angles of attack. The mid-mounted wings are of crop delta configuration. Near the wing roots are the leading edge root extensions, which generate a vortex that provides extra lift to the wing at high angles of attack encountered during combat maneuvers. The leading edge slats and flaps and trailing edge flaps are automatically adjusted with the flight computer during maneuvering to increase turning performance. Due to these features, the JF-17 Thunder displays good turn performance, allowing it to outrate just about any opponent it comes across. In the world of DCS, the JF-17 is one of the deadliest aircraft you can merge with. It should be able to outrate the F-15, but may struggle in a one-circle fight. Should the JF-17 be able to lure the F-15 into a raid fight, things could get really interesting, unless the F-15 uses its superior thrust to weight ratio to outclimb the JF-17. So it should be an interesting fight guys, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Alright guys, here we go. We are in the JF-17 and uh, my good friend Feisty, he is flying the F-15 Eagle for us today. Uh, he'll be in Israeli colors, and he has his own YouTube channel now. So if you're interested, the link will be in the video description. So uh, this should be interesting. We're carrying Fox 3s as well as Fox 2s. So I have SD10s, and he has AMRAMs. And this is obviously a more realistic loadout. Like if you accidentally merge with somebody, you're going to have a little bit of extra weight in the form of your SD3 or SD10. Sorry. And uh, it's interesting because the AM120 and the SD10 can actually do some wild things. There's a Fox 2 from him. It's not going to hit. Um, they can do some really nice tight turns uh, close quarters. So they might surprise you. They're not completely useless. They're not just dead weight in, uh, in a merge. So at this point, what I'm trying to do is just lure him to the ground and uh, rate fight him on the deck. I think I'll have really good chances there if I can do that. Ooh, oh, Fox 2 right past me. All right, so now he's on my six. He's in a pretty good position here, so I'm instantly gonna try to pull him into a, a turn fight here because I think I can outrate him. And you can see he's already having trouble with it because his speed's a little bit lower. And you saw I had my, my nose dump there. I was using God's G to pull the nose around because um, I was in a tight situation there. And you can see now I am outrating the crap out of him on the deck here. And just keep in mind that the F-15 is going to have a very significant uh, thrust to weight ratio advantage over the JF-17. So if he can find a way to exploit that thrust advantage, um, he may be able to pull something off here. You can see I'm pulling up behind him. And he's going to try to dip behind that mountain. Let's see if I can get a Fox 3 off at him. Maybe we can clip him just before he goes over. Oh, that hit the hillside there. That's a shame. And so right here, this is going to be some good reversal cues for Feisty here, and he's going to take them. And it looks like he's going to try to use that thrust to weight advantage that he's got. He's going to try to stack on me here. And you can see he's just going straight into the vertical using that powerful F-15 thrust to weight ratio. And I'm having all kinds of trouble keeping up with him here. All I can do is stay with him. I can't, I won't be able to like shoot him. I'm just gonna stay here. If I ditch out, he'll ditch out, but he'll be on my six, and uh, it'll be a very bad situation for me. So I'm just gonna stay here and hope that he falls out of the sky in such a way that um, it won't kill me. And I'm hoping that I can stay here and not fall out of the sky before him. And there he goes, almost gets nose on, but he's just gonna fall the other way. 
Okay, and we're right back into the fight here. You can see he's got burners on. He's trying to regain that speed that he lost. And we're right back into that raid fight. I might be able to get a gun solution here if I can pull it off lead. The gun on the JF-17 is honestly terrible. You can see, yeah, see? All right, just stay above his nose there. There we go. You don't want to cross right in front of his nose. He did a nice job forcing that overshoot there. And then I'm going into the vertical. Just trying to kind of exploit the fact that I had a little bit more energy than he did there. And he's going to try to follow that. So he was trying to lure me into that whole scissor, one circle, nose position fighting that he's going to beat me at, probably. Like the F-15 actually has a chance uh, against the JF-17 doing that kind of stuff. And I just ditched out and we're just going around the circle again here because I'm not going to play that game, you know. Um, I'm going to try to stay with what is my advantage and that is just raiding around circles. And uh, if I can do this correctly, I'll be able to get a kill. He fired one off there. That was an AIM-120. So you can see how those are still kind of dangerous here. I have SD-10s, and I think I can get one off here. Fox 3, and yeah, that actually hit him. That hit him right in the face. <laughs> Good kill. Good kill. So you can see the JF-17's ability to, you know, raid around circles can create some very serious problems for your opponent if you can exploit those and force them into those situations. The problem is Feisty is actually pretty good, so he's not going to make those mistakes again as he learns to fly against the JF-17. Um, I doubt we're going to get that kind of fight to happen ever again. He's very good at forcing what he needs his aircraft to do. And obviously I'm going to try to do the same against him. So. It's a matter of who can really capitalize on the situation. There's the merge. Alright, so you can see I'm really pulling around. He can pull nicely too in these first couple turns against the JF-17. There's a lock. It's not going to be like those, uh, just way too many Gs for any missile in that situation unless we had 9Xs and neither one of us has that. Right there. He may have had a gunshot there, I'm not sure. I don't know if he had his gun selected. But you can see as long as he has altitude, he can cause problems. And that one's gonna miss. Maybe I can get a gunshot here. Oh, how did that not hit him? That looked like it was perfect. Okay, so here he goes doing the same thing he did before he's going to try to use the thrust to weight um, at a ratio of the F-15 against the Jeff. It's a smart idea. I don't think I can keep up with him here. This isn't looking good. Once again, you know, we talked about this in the last round. I can't just ditch out. If I ditch out, you know, he'll come up behind me and I'll die. So I'm kind of committed here. He's going to try to drop that nose any minute now. Oh, he's so slow. Here he comes. I'm not sure I like what I'm seeing.
Well, the last round did not go as planned. He uh, used the thrust to weight ratio of the F-15 very effectively. Uh, I, I knew he was always going to be good at it, but I didn't think he was going to be that good. And uh, the way he just stayed up there and then flopped the nose over at the perfect time came down and shot me right in the face, <laughs> basically point blank. Uh, you know, it was nice. Uh, it's hard to lie about that. It was a really nice uh, kill. Uh, that doesn't stop me from being upset about it, and I think that it was, uh, <laughs> I think it was very disrespectful of him. <laughs> I'm going to try to make him uh, pay for it in this round. Um, I, I think I just need some better energy management, and I should be able to um, stop him from doing that, theoretically. We'll see if that's true. And I'm going to fire an SD-10 at him at some point here. Did you see that? He almost, well, he might have had guns on. I think he maybe just had and switched the guns again. Right here, I'm going to get an SD-10 off, and I'm hoping it can do some of its crazy turns. Fox 3. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it sees him. Ooh. You see that? That's what I'm talking about when I say the SD-10s can do some crazy things. And once again, the objective here is just to lure him into these rate fights on the deck and uh, outrate the crap out of him. Um, you can see he's trying to avoid that to the best of his ability, and he didn't have enough altitude to do anything there. You saw that. And I'm just going to come around. I think he's going to maybe try to hide behind these mountains, make me lose visual. He just went over that ridge line. And I've got the vertical scan. I'm hoping it can kind of pick him up. Uh, I saw him there. Yep, there's the lock. Okay, so I know I'm in the right vicinity. He's uh, in a left-hand turn here. There he is, right over the hilltop there. And so he knows he can't outrate, so I think he's trying to make me lose a visual. There's a missile off for him. That was an SD-10, a Fox 3. It's looks like it's tracking but it's not it just did a nice turn and it's only a matter of time at this point before I outrate him in the circle here and he's gonna have to do something creative and I think he'll go for that thrust to weight ratio thing again he'll reverse that turn um, theoretically I mean why not it worked for him last time okay there's a lock there's no way a Fox 2 maybe we get one off here yeah, there's no way those Fox 2s can turn at these Gs. And so there's the reversal cues, and you can see he's going to take them. He's going to try to get nose on. I'm going to pull into the vertical, try to roll around him. He's definitely going to go for thrust of weight here. He'll go for the vertical. There he goes. He's trying to do that same thing, and I'm not going to let him do it this time. Not again. Fool me once, bro. Fox 2. Flash one. <laughs> Good fight. Good fight. Big thanks to Feist for coming out for this video. Um, if you want to check out Feisty's channel, like I said, link in the video description below, guys. Alright guys, here we go for our attack view review. Try to keep it nice and quick. We got Feisty in the blue F-15, and I am in the red JF-17. There's the merge at Mach 0 0.83 for me, and Mach 0 0.99 for Feisty. You can see at the merge, uh, both of us nose down attitude using God's G to pull around. Um, I saw the best degrees per second out of the F-15 here at about uh, 17. You can see the JF-17 pulling a little bit better at 18.3 and here getting as high as 21. So the Jeff absolutely capable of some really tight turns. You see Feisty using the vertical here. And the objective here all the time was for me to just get him on the deck so he had no more altitude to use. And then I just wanted to rate circles around him. And you can see 
This is the problem with these Fox 2s and the Jeff, I would say. It's one of the bigger weaknesses that doesn't have a helmet mounted sight with high off bore sight Fox 2s. And so when you fire in these situations where the guy's kind of maneuvering out in front of you, he's fairly close. Um, the Fox 2s can't, you know, they just can't turn with them. They, I don't even think they can acquire in the time necessary for them to get the kill. And then right here, you see him pass in front of my nose and I just put the rounds short. And honestly, it's because the Jeff is, the gun sight and the gun on the Jeff is just pretty useless. Uh, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's just not a great um, gun reticle. And so you can see at this point, he's trying to use his thrust to weight ratio and he's just trying to climb above me. And when we talk about um, ditching out, it's the, you, you uh, would have seen this a lot in World War II stuff too. Um, guys would go up and then if I ditch out here, right, and I, I allow myself to fall down, he allows himself to, to fall down. And the danger here is that he ends up on my 6 and he still has aim 120Cs, which means he can be in full control on the way down and just fire a Fox 3 and probably kill me. So uh, very, very dangerous in this situation, right? So I'm just trying to stay with him through this uh, this little thing, and I'm hoping that, you know, we saw it in other fights. I was hoping that instead of him falling in and killing me, he would, you know, fall this way or fall really any other way other than right into my face. And uh, he did it perfectly, though. And you can see here, he actually sees me. He gets visual, drops that wing, and just starts plopping it over and just perfect control of that f-15 on the way down and that's a kill so brilliant brilliant um, example of the thrust to weight advantage being used correctly and uh, he did a great job. So congratulations to Feisty. That's going to be our Attack View review for today, guys. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And big thank you to Feisty for helping out with this video. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.